this lecture, we continue our discussion of switched first-order capacitive networks by examining a capacitive circuit that is driven by a switched current source. By solving for the voltage across one of the circuit's resistors, we demonstrate that whereas the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously, other voltages in a circuit can. Let's take a look at a circuit that has a 4 farad capacitor in series with a 2 ohm resistor. And that combination is in parallel with a 1 ohm resistor. We have a 5 amp current source. And then we have a short that is switched. So before t equals 0 we have a short here. After t equals 0 we open that up. And what we'd like to do is determine the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor and 4 farad capacitor, which is also the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor. I'd like to determine this voltage as a function of time a little bit before and then after we open this switch. So let me start by just making a note here that the capacitance in this circuit is 4 farads. So later when I determine the equivalent resistance I'll multiply the equivalent resistance by this capacitance and that'll give me the time constant. So the first thing I'd like to do is take a look at this circuit just before, in that instant, just before we open up this switch. Well at that point we're going to have a short here and because we have a DC source, a source that is constant in time, the capacitor will act like an open. So let's see what that circuit's going to look like. Well we'll see the short where the switch is and we'll open up this capacitor. So now what it should be able to do is take a look at this voltage. Well, with this short in place, all of the current from the 5 amp current source is going to flow through this short. None of that current will flow through the 1 ohm resistor and because of the short and the open over here, no current will flow through the 2 ohm resistor. So we'll have no voltage across either of these resistors. So the desired voltage, V, just before we open that switch, that'll be equal to zero volts. Now the capacitor voltage is the voltage across this capacitor. That'll also be equal to zero. There's just no voltage on this part of the circuit. So let me make a note about that. That that capacitor voltage is also going to be equal to zero. Now because that's the voltage across the capacitor can't change instantaneously, I then also know that the voltage across that capacitor just after we open that switch is also going to be zero. Now we can't say that this voltage is also going to be zero after we open that switch because this is the voltage across a capacitor which can't change instantaneously but it's also the voltage across a resistor and that may or may not change instantaneously and the only way to find that out is to examine the circuit just after we open the switch. So let's take a look at that circuit. So let's go back. Here's what our circuit looked like. And just after we open this circuit, we're going to have, we open the switch, we'll have an open here. So this wire will be gone in the circuit. Now the capacitor, at that instant, just after we open this, it'll have zero volts. So in general, we could replace this capacitor for that instant in time with a voltage source whose voltage is equal to the capacitant voltage. In this case it's zero, so I'll just replace it with a short. So let's open up that switch and replace the capacitor with a short, and now what we want to do is find the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor and this short, or equivalently across this 1 ohm resistor. Now what's, what we have is a current source that's, going, that's being split through two parallel resistances. So we can use a current division to determine the amount of current that flows through either one of these. And once we know that current, we can then determine the voltage. So let me, uh, let me compute this as the voltage through the 1 ohm resistor. So just after we open that switch, this desired voltage is going to be 1 ohm times the current through that 1 ohm resistor. And that current is going to be the opposite resistance divided by the sum times 
the current that's being split. So there's 5 amps being split. The opposite resistance is 2. The sum is 3. And that's the current. So this voltage would be 10 thirds volts. So it's important to note that the capacitor voltage remains zero just before, just after, but the voltage across the capacitor and the resistor was zero volts before, just before the switch was opened, and then it jumps to 10 third, a little over three volts, just after the switch is opened. So the next thing we want to look at is what's going to happen if we wait many, many time constants. So we think of that as V infinity. So we look at a very, very long time after the switch has been opened. What is that going to be equal to? Well, in this case, what we do, this capacitor, which was holding zero volts immediately after the switch was opened, will ultimately react to the DC current that it's seeing and it'll open back up. So in that case let's go ahead and open that capacitor up see if we can figure out what this voltage will be the desired voltage will be at infinity. Well all of this current now since we have an open is going to flow through the 1 ohm resistor so the voltage from this point to this point will be the voltage across that 1 ohm resistor and that'll be 5 amps times 1 ohm so that's 5 volts. So there we have the voltage, the desired voltage just before we open the switch is 0, just after is 10 thirds, and ultimately it'll attain a voltage of 5 volts. So the last thing we need to do is determine the equivalent resistance. So what we're going to do is turn all of the sources off, so that means replacing this current source with a 0 amp current source, which is equivalent to replacing it with an open and we'll see what the resistance, the equivalent resistance is, looking back through those terminals for the capacitor. So that equivalent resistance, well we got 2 ohms in series with 1 ohm, so that's 3 ohms. So now we can determine the time constant for this circuit that's the equivalent resistance, 3 ohms, times the capacitance, which is 4 farads. So that's going to be 12 ohm farads, or an ohm farad is a second. So 12 seconds. So there's the time constant. So here's our original circuit. And the expression that we have for that voltage VT well that's V infinity plus the voltage just after the circuit the switch is opened minus V infinity and then e to the negative t over tau, the time constant. And for this particular circuit, the infinity is 5 plus, let's see, v0 plus, that's 10 third, minus 5 times e to the negative t over 12, so that's going to be 5 minus, well this will be 15 thirds, so this will be minus 5 thirds e to the negative t over 12. And that's for time greater than 0 or after that we've selected the switch. Well let's go ahead and plot, make a little sketch of what this, uh, this voltage would look like. Uh, let me lay out a time axis here, a voltage axis. We'll label those. There's time, and this is VT. 
This is time zero. That's when we change the position of the switch. And then what we look at is the voltage just before and all the times leading up to that change of the switch. That'll be at zero. And then immediately after we change the switch position, it'll jump up to 10 thirds. So we'll get this instantaneous jump and then ultimately it'll take an exponential curve up to about 5 volts for its final value. So we'll see this kind of uh, transition up to that final value of 5 volts and we get about 63% of the way at time equal to 12 seconds. So there's a sketch of the voltage across this series combination of the 2 ohm resistor and the 4 farad capacitor or equivalently it's the voltage across this 1 ohm resistor and what we see is that the voltage just before we change the position of the switch is different than the voltage just after. We get an instantaneous change there and then we see the exponential change up to the final value of 5 volts.